Hello and welcome. In this section, we will discuss the management of hemophilia in the emergency department using a patient scenario. I am Stephen Pipe, Professor of Pediatrics and Pathology at the University of Michigan, where I direct the Pediatric Hemophilia and Coagulation Disorders Program. After completing this CME activity, you should be able to recognize and manage hemophilia-associated complications, have an understanding of the clinical efficacy and safety of current and emerging treatments for hemophilia, and implement personalized evidence-based approaches for the management of hemophilia in the emergency department. Hemophilia is the most common severe bleeding disorder and is caused by a deficiency or dysfunction of either coagulation factors 8 or 9, which is hemophilia A and B respectively. It is X-linked recessive, thus males are affected and females are carriers. Hemophilia A is the most common, about 80 to 85 percent of cases, affecting about one out of every 5,000 live male births. The clinical classification of hemophilia is determined by the residual factor 8 or 9 activity in the patient's plasma. The majority of patients have severe hemophilia with less than 1% residual activity and are at risk for spontaneous bleeding episodes primarily into joints and if they were not on any regular replacement therapy would typically bleed several times per month. Those with moderate hemophilia have as little as 1 to 5% residual activity and may still experience joint bleeding triggered by trauma but generally less frequent than those with severe disease. Those with factor levels above 5% have mild disease in which bleeding is uncommon but may be triggered by significant trauma or surgery. The goals for hemophilia care management is rapid and effective replacement of the missing coagulation factor to treat or prevent bleeding and prevent the complications of recurrent bleeding events. Care is provided within federally funded comprehensive hemophilia treatment centers that are staffed by a multidisciplinary team who are experts in the management of bleeding disorders. The primary treatment strategy is prophylaxis with treatment products to prevent bleeding events, though those with milder forms of hemophilia may only receive episodic or on-demand treatment as needed related to injury, surgery, or traumatic bleeding events. The foundation of treatment of hemophilia for the past five decades has been replacement of the missing coagulation factor protein provided from plasma-derived or recombinantly produced factor 8 and 9 concentrates. Patients with mild hemophilia A may respond to treatment with a synthetic analog of vasopressin called desmopressin, which can transiently elevate endogenous factor 8 levels. Adjunctive therapies include supportive care principles as well as antifibrinolytic therapies. The vast majority of bleeding episodes in severe hemophilia occur into joints and are termed hemarthroses. Recurrent bleeding into the same joint may eventually lead to synovitis, an inflammatory reaction of the synovium to the blood in the joint, and is characterized by synovial hypertrophy and progressive cartilage degradation. Progressive deterioration over time will eventually lead to a crippling hemophilic arthropathy characterized by severe osteoarthritic changes and significant impairment of joint function and chronic pain. This slide depicts current and future approaches to care for persons with hemophilia. Up until the late 1960s, there was no available replacement therapy for hemophilia, and bleeding complications were managed with supportive care only. Protein replacement therapy with factor 8 and 9 was first achieved with plasma-derived factor concentrates, allowing effective treatment when bleeding events occurred, so-called on-demand treatment. However, this still led to progressive joint disease. Preventing bleeding events through prophylactic infusions of factor concentrates dramatically improved clinical outcomes for patients by effectively preventing joint bleeding and preserving joint function and quality of life. The genetic era began in the 1980s with the cloning of the genes for factors 8 and 9, ultimately allowing for the development of recombinant versions of the clotting factors. Initially, these were unmodified, but a number of bioengineering innovations, including protein conjugations and fusion proteins, has led to recombinant proteins with extended half-lives that have also improved outcomes for many patients. We have just entered a new era with products which do not replace the missing protein, but provide effective prophylaxis through two strategies. The bispecific monoclonal antibody that substitutes for the clotting function of factor VIII. In addition, there is a series of strategies that rebalance the hemostatic system by targeting the body's natural anticoagulants. These include a small interfering RNA that knocks down levels of antithrombin, monoclonal antibody inhibitors of tissue factor pathway inhibitor, and a bioengineered serpent that inhibits activated protein C. These agents have significant advantages over protein replacement therapy as they can be delivered subcutaneously and have long half-lives. 
These can, however, carry a risk for thrombotic complications and require specialized management to be used safely. Finally, there have been great advances in gene therapy. Strategies being investigated include gene addition, gene editing, as well as cellular therapy. These strategies offer the potential for durable expression of factor VIII and IX that would ultimately liberate patients from the need for regular prophylactic therapy. I'd like to highlight a couple of important triaging principles for hemophilia. Individuals with bleeding disorders should be triaged urgently because delays in administering factor concentrate treatment can significantly affect morbidity and mortality in these individuals. Consultation with the patient's hematologist or a regional hemophilia treatment center professional is strongly advised. However, this should not delay giving clotting factor replacement to the patient as soon as possible. Treatment for a suspected bleeding episode is based on clinical history. Physical exam findings may be normal in the early phases of most hemophilic bleeds. Spontaneous bleeding is common in individuals with severe disease, and when in doubt, administer clotting factor replacement therapy immediately. Treatment decisions should be based on the suspicion of a bleeding-related problem, not the documentation of one. If the patient or the parent of a patient suspects that occult bleeding is occurring, administer clotting factor replacement. Patients often are instructed to carry with them appropriate factor replacement dosing guidelines as advised by their treating hematologist. These are some important principles on the use of diagnostic studies for hemophilia when presenting to the emergency department. Clotting factor replacement therapy should be given before any diagnostic studies, including x-rays or CAT scans, are performed to evaluate for a suspected bleeding problem, especially in the case of head trauma or suspected intracranial hemorrhage. For routine joint bleeding, no radiographic studies are indicated. For patients with hemophilia who have illnesses or disorders that necessitate an invasive procedure, such as lumbar puncture, arterial blood gas, etc., or surgery, factor replacement therapy to a 100% correction level must be administered in the emergency department prior to the planned procedure or surgery. For an individual with known hemophilia, routine laboratory studies, including PT, PTT, and factor levels, are not indicated in the treatment of a routine bleeding episode unless these have been requested by the patient's hematologist. The clinical severity of a patient's hemophilia is gauged by his or her baseline clotting factor level, a value that remains fairly constant throughout that person's life. These are some principles on administering treatment products. For factor VIII products, plasma level will increase approximately 2% for every one unit per kilogram that's infused. Uh, factor VIII products have a half-life of between 8 to 12 hours and a 50 unit per kilo dose will give a 100% correction. For factor IX, the plasma level increases about 1% for every 1.2 to 1.5 unit per kilo that's infused. And these products have a half-life of between 18 to 24 hours. 120 unit per kilo will typically give a 100% correction. Factor is administered IV as a push over one to two minutes. And if a patient with hemophilia or the parent of a patient with hemophilia brings clotting factor with them to the emergency department, allow them to utilize it. They should be permitted to reconstitute the product and administer it whenever possible. Patients with mild hemophilia can often be treated with intranasal DDAVP and aminocaproic acid. Now let us take a look at a short video of a patient scenario in the emergency room. Austin, I'm Dr. Sini. Nice to meet you. What brings you to the emergency department today? Um, I fell down and hurt myself and I have mild hemophilia A, so I just wanted to get it checked out. I'm sorry to hear that. Tell me more about the fall. What exactly happened? Uh, I was playing soccer with some friends and tripped. When was this? Uh, today, just this morning. Okay. Where does it hurt? Anything swollen? Uh, yes, my right knee is painful and it's swollen. Okay. Any chance you might have hit your head at all? Uh, no, I definitely didn't hit my head. I see that you have your knee wrapped up here. Are you able to walk on it? Uh, walking is a little difficult because of the pain. Okay. Did you infuse factor for yourself at home? Uh, yes. When is the last time you did that? Uh, three days ago prior to the soccer game. Okay. How often do you normally treat yourself with factor? Uh, just for injuries and before athletics, but I just ran out and I haven't got a chance to get it refilled yet. Okay. It'll be no problem to send you home with a couple of doses, but it will be important to refill that prescription as soon as possible. Okay. Do you have any other medical conditions I should know about? No. Any allergies? No. Have you had any joint bleeds before? Yes. When was the last time that happened? Uh, last year. Again, I was playing soccer and I injured the same knee. Okay. 
Do you see your hematologist regularly? Yes, twice a year. Okay, and one more question. Do you know what your baseline factor eight level is? Uh, yes, it's 5%. Okay, so here's what the plan's gonna be. We're gonna give you one dose of factor now and then watch you for a couple of hours to make sure that the bleeding has stopped. After that, we will let you go home, um, but we'll send you home with a couple of extra doses and you'll need to take one 24 hours from now and one two days after that. Um, it'll be really important to follow up with your hematologist to make sure there aren't any medication changes and to see if there's any further rehabilitation that you'll need for your knee. We're also just going to do a quick x-ray of your knee right now to make sure that you didn't suffer any bony injuries from the fall and we'll treat your pain with some acetaminophen. Um, does that sound like an okay plan? Yes, Great. thank you. My name is Lauren Sini and I'm an emergency physician at Duke University. Here are some key takeaways for the management of hemophilia in the emergency department. Assess the cause and severity of the injury, especially ruling out head trauma. Factors should be infused promptly at the first sign of joint bleeding. Do not delay for diagnostic testing. Be sure to ask about any prior injuries and bleeding episodes, and make sure the patient understands the treatment plan and has enough factor to self-infuse at home. Pain that is not well controlled at home with oral analgesia. Injury that requires inpatient treatment and intervention. Suspicion of an infection. And bleeding in an individual with an inhibitor that is not responding well at home. Lastly, be sure to emphasize hematologist follow-up on discharge. This scenario clearly involved a joint hemarthrosis related to trauma. The patient's symptoms and physical exam are generally sufficient to identify the bleed and to proceed with infusion. However, had the patient had a significant head injury, there should be a careful evaluation. Explore the mechanism of injury, inquire about possible loss of consciousness, and conduct a thorough clinical evaluation. It's also helpful to know if the patient had infused within a short interval prior to the injury. Remember that mild hemophilia refers to the patient's residual factor level not the severity of potential bleeds. Intracranial bleeds can still occur in mild hemophilia with significant injuries. Should there be sufficient clinical concern for a significant closed head injury, the patient should be promptly infused with factor before any radiologic interventions. Patients are encouraged to bring their own factor concentrates from home. Although any factor product can be substituted in an emergency, individual products can have variable pharmacokinetic properties and impact on laboratory assessments. Therefore, it's best to use the product the patient has been prescribed. Now let's take a look at the SMART goals that you can now implement in your practice. Promptly assess and treat a suspected bleeding episode in a patient with hemophilia, and adhere to the current recommendations for the management of hemophilia in the emergency department.